What if I told you there are four more NASCAR charters available? Yeah, you heard me right. There are actually four more NASCAR Cup Series charters available. But there's a catch. No, NASCAR is not holding out on us like Nicholas from Heavyweights, but those four charters, they're not available for just general purchase. Dale Jr. just can't call up Steve Phelps and be like, hey man, I want a charter. Why don't you give me one or two so I can take Jerry in with the Cup Series? That's not happening. Instead, NASCAR is holding on to four additional charters for a fourth OEM, whenever that fourth OEM joins, if ever. So NASCAR has been holding on to these charters since 2016. And obviously with the talks about Honda potentially joining the sport heating up, the topic of charters came up once again because everybody keeps wondering what happens if uh, Honda wants to come in. Do they have to partner with an existing team that already has charters? Will NASCAR make other charters for them? Well, the answer is NASCAR is holding on to these four. And of course, Honda could come in and partner with an existing team like a Spire or a Trackhouse, just throwing people out there, not singling anyone out and join them, right? And then those four charters are basically null and void. They just kind of continue to exist until NASCAR figures out what they want to do with them. But there's going to be a ton of fans that are going to be in the comments and being like, hey, get rid of the charters, get us back to 43 car fields so that we can have the New York racings of the world go out there and putt around with their unwrapped five-star bodies. Uh, okay, sure, fine. But I think there might be a quick fix for this because right now, NASCAR's issued 36 charters. We all know that. There's four open spots, which means that the field is capped at 40 cars. If you move up to 40 chartered cars, in theory, you have to have more spots for open cars, which thus takes us back to a 43 car field and everybody can go home and be super happy. Except they're NASCAR fans, so they'll never actually be totally happy with anything that happens. Trust me, I'm just as guilty. So if NASCAR does do that, there's a lot of questions around this, potentially around those four additional charters. Because like I said, if Honda comes in and joins an existing team, well, they don't need those four charters then. So then the field just stays at 36 chartered cars and then caps out at 40 once again. But say Honda comes in and only wants two of those charters. Now we have 38 charters. Does that mean we only have two open spots? Is the field capped at 42 now? Do they just go all the way up to 43? Eh, there's a lot of things that remain to be seen here. And then comes one of the biggest questions. Does Honda end up having to pay for those four charters? Say they want all four and they introduce four new charters into this 36 charter pool. Well, that dilutes the 36 charters that all of these owners already have. So will there have to be some sort of money exchanging hands, an anti-dilution fee to use a F1 term here uh, to compensate teams for the fact that there's four more charters, thus driving the price down. Spire just spent $40 million. They can't be super psyched about the idea of four more charters getting introduced when they're like, dude, we could have went and bought those instead, except they couldn't because they're not a manufacturer. Which brings me to the next point. No, once again, Dale Jr. cannot get them. Uh, these charters are meant for new OEMs. So unless Dale Jr. is going to start up his own automotive company called the June Bug or whatever model he wants to have, he cannot get his hands on them. Before we move on, this video is brought to you by Lockdown Brand. Break card 10 for 10% off. Back to the charters real quick. Again, the only way that these four charters get sent out is if a new OEM joins and if they want those actual charters. But I do like the fact that NASCAR is holding on to these and the off chance that this does happen. Of course, there's going to be people being like, sell them to Dale Jr. He's not buying them. I don't know what everybody wants out of this. Uh, not at the current uh, going rate for what a charter is at the moment. But overall, this is a step in the right direction, right? Like having the charters available and potentially four more for a new OEM is good. I know people will talk about how bad the charter system has been for NASCAR, this and that. It's not. The charter system has been good. It's made Spire and Rick Ware want to be competitive, want to reinvest into their team. Why? Because the better they run, the more that charter is worth, should they ever want to get out of the sport. It also means that they're going to make more prize money at the end of the year. Of course they want to run better because it means more money. And at the end of the day, the charter system has driven everybody's level of performance up. Obviously, the 78 car was a bit of an outlier, but even running dead last still garnered $40 million for BJ McLeod. Great business move by him. Absolutely phenomenal. Definitely lined his pockets, and I have no problem with that whatsoever. But the charter system does work. It has done its job. I understand why people want to go back. Unfortunately, there's not a litany of Gen 7 cars available out there for people to show up at the racetrack and want to join. At the most, the field is going to cap out at 40 cars, maybe 42 cars at the biggest events of the year, like the Daytona 500, probably not even the Brickyard 400 at this point, maybe the Coke 600, maybe the Southern 500, uh, and maybe a road course here or there. But for the most part, it is what it is uh, going forward. So, 
Four charters are available, just only for a new OEM. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.